You looking to learn how to make New Orleans style beignets? Then AB got you. Take a look. As you guys can see, not a whole lot. Don't forget, we're doing New Orleans style beignets and the full ingredient list will be down in the description box below. Okay, so after we fly over all of the ingredients, you guys can see it's not a whole lot to it, right? And again, I'm gonna say this, listen, these are New Orleans style beignets. So first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get my milk. I'm gonna go ahead and pour this inside, right? Then look, I'm gonna bring my sugar and my butter over this way. And I got my active yeast, right? This is my dry active yeast. We wanna put this in and when you're dealing with yeast, let me just say this, 116 Fahrenheit and above, you'll kill it, right? So we're gonna bring this to 180. Now look, I'm using a thermometer, right? A digital thermometer, you guys can see. I monitor everything when I'm cooking. I know if my grandma was here right now, she'd probably have a fit. You know what I mean? Look, so I wanna show you. I said we don't wanna go past 180 degrees. I don't. So listen, this right here, 157. I'm good with that. Clean that off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and introduce my butter. Right, because we just wanna go ahead and let that melt. I suggest you guys, if you're like new to like cooking or whatever, and especially, I treat this like, this is like baking almost. You know what I mean? So look, do everything and do it slow. You know what I mean? So you want your flame on the bottom to be a little slow, you know, low. You know what I mean? That way you don't have any problems, right? Because remember, we don't want to go past 180 degrees. If you want your beignets to come out like these right here. Okay, so now that my, you know, my butter has melted, I like this. We're not frothing over or nothing like that. I'm going to go ahead and remove my, you know, my flame right now, right? Right now, I'm going to come with my brown sugar because the yeast going to need something to eat, folks. This is melting fine. I'll turn my flame off, all of that, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and check it. Right now we're at 169 degrees, right? I wanna get this down to under 115. 115 is good. When I see 115, that's when I go ahead and add my yeast. Okay, so look, now what we wanna do is we wanna check it, right? I've just been waiting for it to cool. 106, 111. I don't wanna see nothing past 115. It's stirred up, ooh wee folks, there we go. It's ready. Now I, got, I want you guys to pay attention to this part right here. All right, so let me go ahead, tap it a couple of times. All right, bring this over. There we go. Now I'm gonna tell you guys so you know how, if it's working or not. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little whisk. You want it to get, get in there, you want it to eat some sugars, All right? Once I get it stirred up, and what I wanna see is, I wanna see it become like frothy, you know, on the top. Almost look like some bubbles or something like that, but you'll know. Frothy, it, it's gonna look just like it sound, right? So we'll just wait, I'm gonna say about five minutes, and then after that, we're gonna move over to the next step. And then eventually we're gonna get in this refrigerator, we're gonna wait a little bit, and then we're gonna get to the good part. And that's putting them in that grease, baby. Okay, so while we letting that, you know, work, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and take my flour, put this in a bigger bowl, right? And then I'm gonna add my salt, real simple, salt. And we just wanna incorporate the salt into our flour. Okay, so look, you see that right there? It looked like it got like a, a, a topping on the top, right? That right there, when I say frothy, it looks just like what that word says. You know what I mean? So look, that's it right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. And when I do it like that, it kind of like remind me of having like a root beer float, you know? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my vanilla extract. All right, so put it in like that. Now we go ahead and add a little bit of this in here. You guys gonna thank me by adding this cinnamon. Now don't forget the full ingredient list will be down in the description box below. And I want to give a shout out to Kenneth Temple. You know what I mean? Uh, listen, help me bring my beignet game to what it is today. Hey Kenneth, I see you. And don't forget, we still got that date, man. All right. Now after we got everything in here, right? I want you guys to come and look at this. If you look, I'm doing it with a whisk. I just want to show you it's not as liquefied as it was when you just have the milk. Once you add the egg, you know, and all the rest of your ingredients, you can see it's got this little bit on the thick side. Oh, and here's a pro tip. If you guys want them to be a little bit of light and airy, if you guys get yourself, you know, a sifter, you put your flour in there and just hit it. What you're doing is you loosen it up and to keep it from being so dense. So now this has been cool. This is ready. Now we just go ahead and put this in here just like this. You can make the little indentation. You know, some people do. But for me, I do it just like this. And I ain't gonna lie to you, sometimes I do that too. Now, 
I'm gonna go ahead and use, this is why I have my spatula right here. I just do it like this and I just start mixing and doing a little fold over, you know, just like this. And if you guys notice, look how I just rotate my bowl. I just keep doing it. You know what I mean? These are just like different techniques that I like to share. This helps me, maybe to help you. If you guys have a better way of doing it, you know, let me know. All right now, I only use this spatula so long because after this flour gets incorporated with our, you know, our wet mix, you know what I mean? Then it's gonna start becoming like dough and getting sticky. And that's when we get in there with our hands. Okay, so look, I kind of like kneaded it into a little ball like this, right? I'll set this over here, bring this here, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put just a little bit of oil in here, just like that. I just take my hand, and I just rub this around like this. And that's just regular cooking oil, right? This is so when it rises, it doesn't, uh, you know, stick to the bowl, right? Take it, just go ahead, set this in here. So I'm getting ready to put some saran wrap over the top and then I'm getting ready to put it in the oven. The oven is not on by no means, right? I just put it in there because it's just out of the way. You know, it's quiet and the temperature is what it is in there, right? You guys can put it on your counter, just set it off to the side. And again, don't forget to put that saran wrap on it. And then I let it rise for about one hour or until it doubles in size. All right, so look, I already took a look at it probably like about 10 minutes ago. Saw it like really like double. You know what I mean? Uh, you guys can take a look. Check this out right here. Mmm, that's a nice size. I guess you guys can say the yeast did work, right? Yeah, let's put a little flour here. That's what I like about having these, you know, these countertops like this. All right, so we got that there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drop this out. Remember we put that oil, you see how easy it just come out of there? Put that there. Let's just go ahead and push some of that air out of there. Now, you wanna get yourself a rolling pin. Now that I got my rolling pin, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this flour, put this on my rolling pin like this, all right? Now, you wanna go ahead and just roll it out. I'm gonna roll it out like this and bring it back. Just start rolling it out. Okay, so you can see, like I rolled it out, it starts to rise like on the edge, look, like this. I can keep rolling it. It's up to you. The thicker you, you know, you the layer it is, the bigger they're gonna be, right? So I like mine to be about a quarter of an inch. You know, that's it for me. You wanna heat your oil up to about 375 degrees. I got a little bit hotter than that. I'm letting that cool right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut these down like this. You know what I mean? We just set that off the side. Now it depends on how big you want your beignets to be. You know what I mean? That'll determine how wide you cut them, right? So the wider they are, the bigger they are. Okay, so I like my temp. I'm right at about 375 to 380. Now what you want to do is just go ahead and grab them. You put them in and just drop them in. You know what I mean? Uh, I drop them in and I keep them away from me though, folks. You know what I mean? We don't want to catch no splatter. Then if you keep looking at them, they start rising right in front of you. Look at how they turn into like little pillows. So listen, after maybe just like a couple of minutes, if you can maintain your, your oil, you know, look at this right here. Look at that right there, folks. Look, this is what you want. Nice. Ooh. Don't forget, we hit a little bit of that cinnamon in there too. It's ready. Look at the color, folks. You really want to just cook them to the color. If you got your oil at the right temperature, they come out fine, just like that. When you reach this color right here, you're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple of more, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that ooh wee on them. Okay, so now for the good part, right? Look, convection of sugar, I don't know why I keep calling it that. We all know it as, you know, powdered sugar, right? So now we load it up. Let's go ahead and put a couple of these in here like that. And now for the good part, folks.
Hey, so you see how it comes out. Look, they're super easy to make, you know what I mean? And uh, it's probably in my top 10 vid uh, video requests. Everybody want to know how to make a New Orleans style beignet. So here we go. I'm getting ready to do something extra. Give me a couple of weeks and I'll show you and check it out. We're going to do that outside on the grill. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to just take one of these right here. Ah, these bite size. Instead of me, uh, nah, I better get a big one. I know you guys want to see what they look like in the inside. All right, so cheers. Super fire, folks. Real, real easy to make. You know what I mean? Uh, who would ever thought a channel called Smoking and Grilling with AB be making and baking? Hey, with that being said, listen, if you like this, let me know down in the comment section below. Hey, other than that, you know how I like to leave y'all. Listen, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say, hey, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And guess what, folks? I'm about to get fat on these beignets. I'm out. Peace. Thank you.